I'd say get, having an inventory is, is crucial. Um, we see a lot of cases where perhaps landlords or tenants don't understand the importance of it. Um, we even see some cases where agents forget to do it or say to their landlords, don't worry about it, it can all be done at the end of the, the tenancy. So it's crucial to have an inventory at the beginning of the tenancy to, to set the tone for condition and cleanliness so that we've got something to compare again against at the end of the tenancy. The starting point that we work from at TDS, no different to the courts, is that the, the deposit is the tenant's money. So if there's no evidence at the end of the tenancy to justify a deduction from a deposit, that deposit will be returned to the tenant. So to an extent it's actually in a tenant's favour if there was no inventory at all because then it would be much more difficult for a landlord to prove that there was no no change in condition. So it's for both parties benefit but I think landlords sometimes perhaps a legacy of old assume that the deposit is there for them and they can claim for it where they need to. Um, obviously a different different age now and they need to be able to justify deductions with evidence. And we tend to find a mixture of words and photographs gives the best balance. They both have their strengths and weaknesses and in combination they work well together. Um, I think the other thing that is important is to be able to show when an inventory was taken, um, that the tenants had the opportunity to see it and comment on it and to raise any discrepancies. So we see a lot of agents who won't necessarily physically check a tenant into a property but will give them the inventory, say to them you've got for example, seven days to check it and return it to us. If you don't, we'll take the condition as, as read. And that's another way of, of being able to benchmark that, that condition at the beginning. Um, I think it might be worth having a look at the, the example on the screen here, which is perhaps an extreme case, but it's an example of a combined check-in and check-out report produced by an agent in an adjudication at TDS. We couldn't establish what, fo uh, what comments had been made when. Um, in fact, it wasn't even possible in that case to tell the property that the inventory was for because it didn't have the address on it either. Um, so no award from the deposit, the tenant got their deposit back. Um, in this case, the agent, obviously unhappy, contacted afterwards, contacted TDS afterwards and said, but it's obvious what the check-in and check-out comments were because they're in different colours on the document. And unfortunately, they'd only sent us a black and white photocopy, so that didn't really help their case either. Certainly over 50% of the cases that we deal with are about cleaning um, and a little bit less than that are about damage. So condition type arguments are, are most of the cases that we deal with. So I would say you know, good inventory check-in and check-out report is going to be important evidence in all of those, those cases. Um, you mentioned do we call for the evidence. I think it's important to say that we won't go and look for it. We won't ask the parties for evidence that we think we need to see to help their case. It's up to them to, to submit the evidence to us. And obviously as a, an impartial adjudicator, we couldn't go to one or other party and say you need to send us this evidence to win your, to win your case. Yes, I mean, this is a case where a um, £500 deposit, um, no inventory or check-in, um, no check-out, purely photographs from a landlord at the end of the tenancy to show the condition of the property, as you can see. Um, and there was an acknowledgement from the tenant that they'd left the property not in as good a condition as perhaps they should have done, but an argument about quite how bad it was. In this particular case, we, notwithstanding that we didn't have a check-in or check-out report, still awarded the deposit to the landlord on the basis that the property couldn't have been like that when the tenant moved in. Why would they have moved into the property? There was an acknowledgement from the tenant that all was perhaps not quite as it should have been at the end of the tenancy. And by any judgment, that was clearly more than £500 worth of, of cleaning and damage. If we look at the sort of arguments we get from tenants um, about inventories, some are... I don't know when it was taken, I never signed it, that's not the inventory for my property, it wasn't like that when I moved in. So we get lots of arguments about the validity of the inventory documents. So I think anything that can pinpoint when it was taken, where it was taken and, and document more accurately what it shows has to be a good thing.